welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the moment that changed my life forever. So one of the questions that I get asked all of the time is what was my moment? What was the moment where I decided that I was gonna change my life forever? At 500 pounds where I decided I'm not only gonna lose weight, but completely change my whole life. And so that's what I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about in this video. So as you can see, I have my cute little mini ears on because if you guys didn't know, if you're new around here, Disney is a huge part of me and it's one of my biggest passions and something I love, but my moment actually happened in my favorite place on earth, Disneyland. And so that's kind of where a lot of things kind of fell into place for me, but also where I hit rock bottom. Like I wanna start with saying, I was someone who used to wait and think that there was gonna be some magical fairy that was gonna come down and say, today's the day you're gonna change, today's the day. And so I kept putting off weight loss. I kept putting off, you know, changing my life because I didn't quite know where to start and I kept looking for that perfect moment or that moment where I was like, okay, these circumstances are all lined up, everything's ready to go, and everything's perfect, so now I'm gonna get started. And while I think a lot of people have like a moment, and obviously I do, because that's what this video is about, I also think we have to be the ones to kind of create those moments because the circumstances are never gonna be perfect. If you feel like in your life, whether it's weight loss related or not, that you wanna make a change and you wanna start changing something or working towards your goals or your dreams, you don't have to wait until a specific moment or to feel like the time is right, the circumstances are perfect, a fairy comes down and is like, okay, today's the day. It's just starting and starting is the hardest part. And I think that's why I kind of used this, oh, I have to wait until the perfect timing as an excuse because I was afraid to start because like I said, starting is the hardest part. To preface all of that is if you want to do it, you have to do it for yourself and when you feel ready. So just because the fairy might have come down and say, today's the day, if you're not ready, it's not gonna work. The changes are not gonna happen. And so I think that's more where my moment happened is because I was finally ready. And so I just kind of want to preface that, that if you're ready and waiting for that right moment, there's never going to be a right moment. You just have to get started. That's something I've learned throughout my journey and along the way that I kind of wanted to share before I jump into this kind of magical story where my life did change. So I always struggled with my weight. I always struggled with my body, my size, tried every diet. And I think that's why it was hard because I felt myself gaining weight and I felt it different as I was like, climbing that mountain to 500 pounds, it felt different where I felt completely out of control and I could not stop eating. And the more upset I was about my weight or my body or my choices, the more I kept turning to food more and more. The more people would tell me, hey, you know, your weight's getting out of control, you're gaining a lot of weight, you should lose weight. It triggered something like deep down inside and I kept turning to food more and more and more. So I was in a really dark place where I knew I wanted to lose weight. I knew I was not happy with where I was. I knew I was not living my best life possible, but I didn't know what to do. I felt completely stuck because I felt like every diet, every program, everything I tried just led me to gain more and more and more weight. I would lose the weight and gain it back, lose the weight, gain it back. And so part of me really fell into a state of depression where I was like, I don't know what to do because nothing feels like it ever works. And I really started doubting myself, really started hating myself, really started hating my body and was really not treating myself or my body with any kind of love or respect at all. And all I kept doing was eating more and more to cover the pain, to cover the hurt, to cover the emotion and I felt my life was spiraling out of control. And like I said in the beginning of this video, Disneyland is my favorite place in the whole entire world. And for a while I was completely avoiding it because I knew my weight was gonna hold me back. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to walk. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to enjoy the parks and live my happiest life in Disneyland. And I also knew there would come judgments, comments, stares, people looking at me and I just completely avoided it. When I was at my deepest, darkest moment, I was really struggling and my sister 
has the sweetest, kindest heart, was like, I think a trip to Disneyland would do you good. I think you're really in a negative place. We need to take a trip and just kind of, she was thinking like, get you out of this funk. Maybe you'll get your spark back, your happiness back, your energy back. And so my fiance, Kevin, he was my boyfriend at the time, but my fiance, Kevin, my sister and I took a trip to Disneyland. Even the plane ride there, I remember the, the flight attendant, when you go to get on the plane, was even like, hey, are you sure you're going to fit? Like, do you need a seatbelt extender? Maybe next time you should get two seats. It started off really rough. And I kept questioning, why am I doing this? Like, I avoided Disneyland for so long, but why did I agree to this now? And then we got there, we got to Disneyland, to the hotel, got dropped off out in front, went to walk into Disneyland, and I could barely walk. I felt like I was going to completely pass out, fall onto the floor, and again, doubting, why am I doing this? Why did I sign up for this? I can't even walk to the gate. How am I going to enjoy the park? And got up to the front gate had to get a wheelchair because I could barely move. Like I thought I was going to either have a panic attack, stop breathing or fall to the floor. Got a wheelchair and I remember wheeling down Main Street thinking, how is this my life? How did I get here? Like I felt in such like this is rock bottom. This is what it feels like. Spoiler alert, it got worse. (laughs) And I was going down Main Street thinking, This is not how I want to live my life. I wasn't going on rides. I wasn't enjoying my time. And I feel like my sister kept apologizing, like, I'm sorry, I thought this would help. And I was like, this is actually worse. Like, this is actually making everything worse. Like, I feel so much worse about myself because here I am in the happiest place on earth, the place I used to go to feel like myself. From a very young age, it was a place where I was allowed to be myself where the world and the outside comments of friends and classmates didn't define me, where I was able to define myself, was completely gone. And I did not know who this girl was. I did not know who this person wheeling down Main Street in a wheelchair was anymore. And I really tried my hardest (laughs) to have a good time, to not make my sister feel so bad about this. I wanted to have a great time with Kevin. And I was like, I'm here, let me just try to make the most of it. So we went to get on one of the rides where I knew the seatbelt wouldn't be an issue. I would fit, got in line, it wasn't long. About when you were to get on the ride, there's a turnstile that I completely forgot about because I had everything calculated in my head. What's the seatbelt? What's the size? How do you get on? How do you get off? How long's the ride? Like, I calculated it all in my head to figure out what rides I might be able to fit on and which rides I had to avoid. And I completely forgot about the turnstile to get on the ride. And so I'm going through the line, just about to make it to the front, go to go through the turnstile, and I got stuck. And everyone around me I felt like was staring at me. I was so hot. I felt so mortified. And I remember thinking, this, this is my rock bottom. This is where nothing could ever get worse. And I kind of had to like wiggle myself out of the turnstile, got myself unstuck, had to go back through the exit to kind of get out of the line. Of course, was laughing it off like, oh, this doesn't bother me. Wasn't that so funny? I got stuck. Oh, ha ha, like laughing. And then I went to the bathroom and bawled my eyes out. I sat in the bathroom stall and completely lost it. Like, no matter how many times I tell this story, I swear, like, I'm so emotional about it. But, and still, every time I even go to Disneyland and I pass that ride or I pass that bathroom, I'm like, huh, like that, like, little, not panic, but that, like, you know, whatever that emotion is, that's what happens. And I remember sitting in the bathroom stall thinking, how did I let this happen? How is this my life? Who am I? I don't even know who I am anymore. Where I'm sitting in a bathroom in Disneyland, having the very worst day of my life, completely hit rock bottom, and I have no idea where to go from here. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. And I sat there crying, thinking, "What now what? 
someone give me a sign. I remember praying, like, how am I even going to get out of this bathroom? What do I do? And I kid you not, in the moments you're least expecting your moment to happen, that's when it's going to happen. And all of a sudden, I say Disney magic, Tinkerbell, Pixie Dust, whatever it is, came over me. Walt himself came over me. And I remember I like felt different all of a sudden. And I went, you know what? I can do this. I know what I have to do. I know I can change my life. I know I'm capable of achieving my dreams. I know I can do it. And for the first time in forever, I felt like I can do this. I believe in myself. I trust myself. I love myself enough where this, this crying in the bathroom situation of feeling sorry for myself but not doing anything about it is over. It's done. It's like I felt like myself again. I felt like a whole new person. And I remember thinking, I believe in myself because I know anything is possible. This is what this park is made on, is someone's dreams where anything is possible. I knew anything was possible. As cheesy as that sounds, I know. But that is when I finally decided to start believing in myself. And nothing was going to stand in my way of achieving my dreams. And I walked out of the bathroom went home, and my life changed from there, from that moment on. If you're struggling, if you're looking for a sign, if you're looking for something, just know you are strong enough. You are capable. You are deserving of living your best life possible and making all of your dreams come true. The magic you're waiting for, the magic that I was waiting for, is inside us all along. It was inside me this whole time, but I just had to believe in myself. I had to feel it. I had to be ready. And of course, I wish I started my journey before I got to 500 pounds. Of course, I wish I didn't wait that long and I never got to 500 pounds in the first place. But it took me getting to that moment, to hitting rock bottom, to actually truly believe in myself, to actually truly believe that I was deserving of this and I wanted to do this for myself. It wasn't for the doctor. It wasn't to try to impress a guy. It wasn't to try to fit in a dress. It wasn't because everyone was telling me I had to lose weight. It was because I was ready to do it for myself because I believed in myself and I loved myself enough to make the change. So if you're sitting there waiting for that sign and you feel ready, know that that magic, that Disney magic is already inside you. You just have to believe in yourself and you have to just go for it. And that's when I said from that moment forward, I just went for it. No matter how many times I fell down, messed up, bumped, (laughs) scraped myself, bled, screamed, cried, yelled, I kept going. And even now with some weight gain, I still never give up. And my sister told me a quote the other day that (laughs) was very emotional. And she said, while everyone kind of sits back and keeps judging you because you keep starting over, starting over. I'm clapping for you because you never gave up. And that's powerful. No matter how many times you fall down, no matter how many times you think you failed, you messed up, never give up. Fall down, cry, scream, yell, kick, whatever you have to do, but keep moving forward. Because as long as you keep moving forward, you can never truly fail. So that was my little story time. We had some highs, we had some lows, we had some tears, we got stuck in a turnstile, we cried in the bathroom, and we got here. (laughs) We made it here. So I hope you enjoyed kind of getting to learn a little bit about me, a little bit about my journey, kind of how it all started for me, and how kind of Disney plays such a huge role in who I am as a person, but also in my journey. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to never stop believing in yourself and your dreams because anything is possible. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below something you love about Disney, something you love about yourself, one of your goals, dreams, something that you're working on. I'd love to know. And I will talk to you very soon.